an agent calling from Farrelly Mutual about the recent homeowner's insurance inquiry. First, you have some time to look at questions one to six. You will see that there is an example which has been done for you. On this occasion only, the conversation relating to this will be played first. Hello? Yes, I'd like to speak with Janet Evans, please. Speaking. Hi, Miss Evans. This is Jim Rodriguez calling from Farley Mutual about your recent homeowner's insurance inquiry. The man says that he'd like to speak with Janet Evans. So, Janet Evans has been written in the space. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen, because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions one to six. Hello? Yes, I'd like to speak with Janet Evans, please. Speaking. Hi, Miss Evans. This is Jim Rodriguez calling from Farley Mutual about your recent homeowner's insurance inquiry. Yes, hi. Thanks for returning my call. My pleasure. I understand you are potentially interested in insurance for a bungalow located a bit out of town. Could you give me the address? Sure. It's 49 Greenway Court. Greenway is one word. Thank you. All right. And would you prefer to be contacted via email or phone? Either one is fine. Maybe try emailing me first, and as an alternative, I can give you my phone number. Great. And what is your email address? pk2 at cat dot com. <clears throat> Did you say cat as in the animal? Yes, it is the acronym for the construction company I work for. I'm sure you've seen them around. Yes, I have. And could you give me your primary phone number and the best time to reach you? Sure. The number is o two o. Four two five one nine double four three. I am generally unable to answer my phone at work, but any time after five thirty p.m. is fine. I will make a note of that here. Now I'm going to ask you a little bit about property itself, so we can make an accurate estimate of the cost of insuring your home. Could you tell me the size of your house? Hmm. Well, I don't have the exact measurements, but I'm pretty sure it's right around eighty square meters. Should I measure it and call you back later? No, that's completely all right. I'll write eighty square meters for now to get the estimate, and then an agent will come get the exact measurements later on if you decide to purchase our insurance. Okay, great. And what material is your house made of? For example, wood, brick, stucco. It's mainly brick. Great. That will give you a lower rate than most of the materials, since it is so strong. Wonderful. And do you have any sort of home security, Miss Evans? Hmm. We don't have a fence or anything yet, but we have an alarm system that we use regularly. Good. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions seven to ten. Now listen and answer questions seven to ten. Now I'll go through a number of things we offer coverage for, and I'd like you to tell me which items you want your policy to cover. Okay. We'll start with the building itself first. Would you like us to cover incidental damage to the structure to your house? Absolutely. Splendid. And the contents inside your house. We usually cover all items with an appraised value. Of about two hundred pounds, would you like us to cover theft and damage beyond natural wear and tear? I will let you know that the second option here will come with a considerable increase in your rates. I think I'd just like the contents of the house to be covered against theft. Then, all right. And would you like any other insurance—fire, flood, etc.? 
Yes, I definitely want flood coverage. It rains a lot here, and the drainage system in the area is not the greatest. Okay, I am calculating your quotation now.、Uh, it will just take a second. It looks like your annual insurance rate will be one hundred and forty-eight pounds thirty. Thanks. That seems somewhat reasonable. I would like to take some time to think about it. How long does it take to begin receiving coverage after signing up? It depends on the time of year. It can take anywhere from two to six weeks. I would say if you sign up by July the first, you could start your coverage by August the first. I see. Okay. Thanks for your help. Should I call you back at this number when I have made my decision? Yes, please, and so that we can look up your account faster, I'll give you a reference number that you should provide when calling. Ready? Yep. It's T R two seven eight Q. Got it. Thanks. Thank you, and have a nice day. That is the end of section one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. You will hear a speech given by the head of a company to some new employees. You have thirty seconds to look at questions eleven to sixteen. First of all, a warm welcome to Barker's Country Safaris. We're delighted to have you all on board for this season. I know you've all been told a bit about the company when you had your job interview, but I thought it would be worth telling you a bit more about ourselves. Barker's was set up ten years ago by myself, John, and my then girlfriend and now wife, Nancy. We started it initially just as a hobby. We felt that there was a good opportunity to share our love of the countryside in this part of the world with the many visitors who come here. As you know, most people come for the beaches in the summer, but there is so much more to the region, and this is what we wanted to exploit. Nancy and I were born near here, and as teenagers, we went climbing, kayaking, white water rafting, potholing, and just straightforward walking. This district is in our blood, and we love it. <laughs> While we were still at university, we started taking small groups of visitors out into the national park in Nancy's brother's old Land Rover. We'd drive them around the back lanes and into the forest. We'd also organise rock climbing tours for friends of friends. Then each year, without us having to advertise, people came back to us to ask for more excursions and trips. So, five years ago, we gave up our other jobs to focus full time on Barker's Country Safaris. Now, two years after that, we set up the activity tour part of the business, and one year ago, we expanded into organising activities for school groups during term time. Obviously, this was a massive challenge with all the health and safety requirements, but it's proving a great success. You now have thirty seconds to look at questions seventeen to twenty. Anyway, we'll certainly not be dealing with school parties during the summer holidays. Our clients for the next three months are mostly family parties or groups of friends, and I'd like to talk a bit now about the tours we offer and what your responsibilities will be. Our most popular excursion is the Woodland Tour and Trail. 
Now, often this is sold out and we have all of our 10 Jeeps in convoy with eight people in each Jeep. It's a lot of fun. These tours really offer a taster of what we can provide. So as both driver and guide, it is important that you do a good job here so they come back for the bigger tours. Uh, I will talk about the commission package later. As the summer days are so long, we have three tours each day, but you will not be expected to work on more than two of them. Morning tours start at 8 a.m. and go to midday. Afternoon tours are from 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. And then evening ones, 7 p.m. to 11 p.m. All the tours follow the same route and you should have made yourselves familiar with all the key information. This was provided to you in the information pack you were sent when you accepted the job offer. This is important, so if you haven't had time yet, please do so now. Our second most popular tour is the Family Exclusive. Now, this tour is for the whole day and for only one group. Usually it is just one Jeep, but sometimes there are two if the party is large. These tours go from 10 a.m. till 5 p.m. and include lunch at the Brown Bear in Lower Middleton. We have a number of different routes for these tours as we don't want our premium clients being made to feel that they are part of a large package deal. Uh, you will be told which route to take with your weekly schedule. Now, I'd like to move on to these specialty tour packages. These are the ones that we are keen to book people on once they've done the woodland tour and trail trip. Now turn to section 3. Section 3. You will hear a discussion between two design students and their tutor on a practical assignment. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 25. Now listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 25. So, have you chosen a product yet? I think so. We'd like to build a gyroscopic exercise aid. Sounds interesting. Tell me more. Well, uh, we did some research and were amazed to discover the sheer range of applications for gyroscopic technology. Gyroscopes are used in laser and optical devices and can be found in many consumer appliances too. Right. Tell me about this product specifically though. The aim of the assignment is to create something practical, functional and beneficial for consumers. Justify your decision. Well, we believe we can design and build a cheap and effective muscle strengthening aid by taking advantage of the inertial forces created by a gyroscope. Yes. What we want to do is design a ball which can be held in the palm. Within the ball, there will be a simple gyroscope. This gyroscope can be set in motion by movement of the lower arm and wrist together in sync. The device will not require any external power source because it will be sustained by the movement of the arm and wrist. This will create considerable resistance and an excellent lower arm strengthening aid. It will be simple to design and cheap to produce, yet extremely effective. This all sounds very good. I'm impressed. Thanks, Mark. We're glad you like it. I think we're really onto something here. Our research has told us there's nothing comparable in the market and that a product like this would have multiple uses. 
Not only could it be used as an everyday toning and exercise device, it could also be beneficial to people in rehabilitation who have suffered serious lower arm injuries. We see the product being marketed towards high-performance athletes, like tennis and golf players, for whom lower arm strength is vital too. Before you hear the rest of the discussion, you have some time to look at questions 26 to 30. Now listen and answer questions 26 to 30. I've heard enough to give your project the go-ahead. Now, let's talk costs. Right. Well, we estimate that around £3,000 will be required for product development. You mean to build the prototype? Exactly. And we'll need half that again to carry out some product testing. And what's your timeline for the project? The prototype should be ready a fortnight after work on the design starts and we'll need another six weeks for testing. We want to enlist the help of 15 people to test the prototype. Ideally, we want five professional athletes to try it out, five recovery patients and the remainder of the subjects will be gym members, our three target markets. OK. Well, you have a lot of work to do, but you've certainly made a good start. Let's meet again on Monday to get the ball rolling. That is the end of Section 3. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section 4. Section 4. You will hear part of a lecture about public speaking. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Now listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. It is only natural to feel somewhat nervous before giving a speech. And while a few nerves never did any harm, and can in fact prove beneficial, letting your nerves overcome you can be detrimental. Today's presentation will focus on ways to control those butterflies and help you to give better presentations in future. First and foremost, You've got to know your material. I can't stress that enough. If you fail to prepare, you might as well prepare to fail. Even the most experienced speakers never turn up unprepared and never try to wing it. Personalise your subject and use humour, anecdotes and conversational language. This will make it easier for you to remember what you want to say. Secondly, 
Practice, practice, practice. Rehearse well in advance, and preferably out loud, and with all the equipment you plan on using. Practice your timing, when to pause and when to breathe, and prepare for the unexpected. Something always goes wrong, especially when you're relying on technology. So always have a backup plan. Get to know your audience before you have to stand up in front of them. Meet and greet them on the way in, perhaps. It is much easier to talk to a group of friends than a group of strangers. And just as importantly, know your room as well. Arrive early, pace the speaking area, and practice using the microphone and visual aids. The hardest part is trying to relax. Never rush straight into your speech. Begin slowly and address the audience first. In fact, even before you start, take a few deep breaths. You know, one one thousand, two one thousand, three one thousand. This will turn your nervous energy into enthusiasm. Visualization can be a great confidence booster. Visualize yourself making the speech in the way that you intend. Imagine your voice loud and confident, and picture the audience clapping and rooting for you. Remember, people want you to succeed. The audience wants to hear an interesting and insightful speech. They aren't hoping you make a fool of yourself. Whatever you do, avoid making unnecessary apologies. If you make a mistake or two, forget about it. Few will notice, and it will all be forgotten before too long. People often forget the importance of body language. Don't underestimate this. Your words carry far less meaning than your delivery. Success is defined by your intonation and confidence. If you come across as a confident person, people will listen to you. You will command their attention. Stand tall and proud, and deliver with conviction. Humans are very bad listeners. We remember less than twenty-five percent of what is said. And place far more emphasis on how it is said. Last of all, be realistic and give yourself a chance. No one becomes the perfect speaker overnight. It takes time to hone your presentation skills. That is the end of section four. You now have half a minute to check your answers.